So while I'm waiting for the hardware to arrive to permanently attach the landing gear um, brackets and support structure here, there's two other things that I need to finish on the underside of this fuselage before I consider it for the most part done or at least done enough that I'm willing to flip this back over right side up and attach the uh, rear fuselage assembly. Um, so the things we have to finish here is finish the vents for the cockpit which need to be installed on the bottom of the fuselage. There's both intake vents and an outtake uh, air vent to provide cockpit air uh, during flight. Um, now the exhaust vent is designed to go right about here somewhere and the purpose of the exhaust vent here is to take the air that we're bringing into the cockpit and allow some place for it to escape. Um, to make the exhaust vent, what we're actually going to do is the plans tell us to basically drill a bunch of holes in a grid pattern, and it's really it's 120 holes, I believe, that they're suggesting that we drill in a pattern here to just create a vent in the bottom of the fuselage that we're then going to cover with an actual uh, duct or uh, um, kind of a, uh, a reverse intake um, duct assembly. Um, so what I'm going to do is while the fuselage is upside down, I'm going to go ahead and drill those 120 holes. And what I've decided to do to drill that is I'm going to uh, cut out a template on my CNC machine with holes, 120 holes in it, that I can then just tape that onto the bottom of the fuselage here and then just go with uh, a hand drill and go ahead and drill through the bottom of the fuselage to get those 120 holes in the right spot. Um, now the cover that is supposed to go over this uh, is supposed to be made uh, and bent out of aluminum. However, after looking at the plans, and let me show you in the plans over here what's supposed to happen here. So, yeah, so this is the exhaust vent for the air for the cockpit that's supposed to be installed. And here's the holes it's de depicting in the bottom of the fuselage. And then we're supposed to make this cover that goes over it that looks something like this on the bottom of the fuselage. Obviously it faces backwards so the air comes out and goes to the back of the fuselage. Um, and so the problem is, is that to bend these corners here, the way this is designed uh, to be bent, you know, it's gotta have a 12 millimeter flange basically on, on, on all three sides. Uh, I think it's virtually impossible to not screw up these corners here trying to bend up the sides and bend the flanges back down that what I've decided to do is this is a good place to actually make a fiberglass fairing instead of trying to use this sheet metal one here. I think I think you know since we have to make fiberglass parts for the wing tips and some of the other fairings on the airplane why not make a fiberglass one for this that can just be pop riveted onto the bottom of the airplane. So I'm going to make mine out of fiberglass and I'm not going to do that right now uh, but I do want to get all of the holes in place so that when I make the fairing I can just you know go underneath the uh, fuselage after it's on its wheels and just drill a few holes and pop rivet it into place. Um, so the other thing that we need to do is do the intake vents. Uh, which looks something like this. Now the intake vents are supposed to go between frame three and frame four on the bottom of the fuselage and what we're supposed to do is just cut out a square hole, a rectangular hole that's 40 millimeters wide and 80 millimeters long uh, on the bottom of the fuselage and we can measure from the center of frame three 40 millimeters over to figure out where to position that, um, that vent hole. So I'm going to go ahead and get that vent hole cut and uh, then we actually need to bend out of sheet metal these intake vents that are designed to open and close from inside the cockpit. So when you're sitting in the airplane you should be able to reach down and actually pull up on this little uh, piece of aluminum here and open and close these vents inside the airplane. Um, now, as you can see, there's no, there's no flat plate drawing of what this vent is supposed to look like. So we're supposed to look at this drawing and actually try and figure out how to bend something that looks like this that's the right length that is going to fit in between that 80 millimeter open, opening that is also going to allow it to lock itself into place so it doesn't fall out um, and open and close properly. And so that's a little bit more difficult because I had to actually go back and try and figure out, okay, well, how do I draw this? Luckily I have CAD software, so I was able to do a CAD drawing of it. However, my CAD software doesn't do a good job of allowing me to take something that's flat and bend it or take something that's bent and flatten it out. So what I basically had to do was draw this in a flat 
um, you know, in a flat plate type of, uh, of drawing. But one of the things I've done before is what I'll do is I'll actually print off that flat plate and then I'll bend it by hand and actually try and create uh, and, and you know what I'm actually going to bend out of sheet metal and be able to look at this and see okay Well are my angles right here? Do I have the right angle here? Do I've got the right distances? You know is, is, is everything looking like it's going to come out properly? So I did that here as an example So what I'm going to do is go ahead and cut these uh, 40 by 80 millimeter holes I might actually just test fit this piece of sh you know paper inside of the hole just to make sure that this is going to work right as far as closing and, and of course what I'm concerned about is we're supposed to put some foam stiff on either side that stick up that the top of this is supposed to ride onto. Um, we're supposed to put a notch in the back here and a notch in the front apparently because that's the other thing is how do we get this to fit in there, lock into place, not fall out when we open and close it. Um, and it does show in the drawings over here that it's supposed to be locked in place in the back by the sheet metal going into our you know vent a little bit and then on the front it's supposed to go up, but then it's supposed to be stopped by this little lip that sticks over that's bent up so that when we pull it up, we don't end up, you know, getting into this little cutout here. And I think the way this is supposed to work is you're supposed to insert this from the inside of the cockpit and you're supposed to put this little notch here past this edge of frame three here to pop it into place this way. You're supposed to slide it down and then pull it back and it should l latch into this and then it should pop out of the front here because of this spring created by the curvature of that little piece of sheet metal bent over the end. And once it's in place, it should allow it to go up and down and you shouldn't be able to pull it up hard enough that it should pop back into that little it, that little notch there at least I think that's the idea if you wanted to get it out You'd pull it up hard enough and push it forward it back into the slot You should be able to then pop the back out and then pull it back out I, That's the only thing I reason that's the only way I can see this thing working um, The other thing I thought as well I could I could insert it from the bottom and Latch it onto the back here. However, there's these tabs that stick out so you'd have to bend this thing together to get it in from the bottom and push it up. And that might work also, but I think how the designer has set this up, I'm gonna try and get it to work that way first. And uh, we'll kind of go from there. This might actually take a couple tries to get this to work right. But um, for now, I'm gonna go ahead and get the holes cut in the bottom of the fuselage for these two, uh, these two intake vents. And I'm gonna go ahead and drill all the holes out for the exhaust vent. So the second thing that we're going to have to do after we get the vents cut and installed is we're going to have to work on the fairing that covers the entire bottom of the fuselage here where the landing gear assembly is. And the reason I'm doing the vents first is that the cover that goes over the top here is supposed to start right on the aft edge of the vents that we install. So once the vents are installed, we'll have a reference point of exactly where we need to start looking at attaching the sheet metal part that's gonna cover the landing gear here. And this cover is fairly simple. I mean, it's just a, it's just a sheet metal cover that's gonna go over, but it does have to have a rubber piece in the back, or at least it's desi designed to have a rubber piece in the back that attaches to the fuselage that allows this panel to stretch a little bit. And I think the purpose of that is so that if the landing gear bends and bows in the middle and it were to hit that panel, uh, that that panel will actually flex a little bit, you know, down a little bit with the rubber across the back, uh, you know, just to keep it covered, but have it so that it is flexible if it ever, if it ever needs to be. Um, the other thing I'm gonna try and do with that cover panel there is they're showing it pop riveted into place, not only across the front, but across the back and across where the rubber uh, gets installed in the back here. There's no way to get that fairing off and I think that fairing needs to come off every year for an annual inspection Especially to check some of this linkage assembly for the landing gear So I'm going to try and make that cover removable in some form I'm not sure exactly wh where I'm going to replace uh, rivets with screw to try and make it so that I can get that panel back off again um, But that's what we're going to be working on next after we finish drilling the holes for the vents all right, here's the template that I just uh, cut out on the CNC machine that has all the holes in it that I want to drill for the um, exhaust vent for the cabin air. Um, and this is supposed to actually be, I, I was thinking it was back here for the, this was supposed to be placed, but it's actually supposed to be just aft of, of this uh, frame 1B, um, which you can see the rivets that go across here for the frame 1B. Um, so what I'm gonna do is just measure back the appropriate distance, the front of the 
cover that goes over this is supposed to match up with the back edge of frame one B here. So I just got to position this right. So I'm drilling the holes in the correct spot and then I will just center these holes or this uh, template here between the rivets on either side for the uh, pedal rails. I'm gonna go ahead and just tape that into place and then I'm just gonna hand drill all of these out to uh, 1 16th inch size, which is what is drilled into this plate. And then I'm just gonna use a step drill to get from the 16th inch hole size up to the quarter inch that they need to be in their final form. Um, so let me go ahead and tape this into position, start drilling some holes out. All right, this worked out really well here to just uh, mark off exactly where the center of this needed to go. Uh, I just put blue tape right along the edge of the rivets for the uh, pedal rails on each side and then the back side of frame 1B. Um, and then I went ahead and measured from the rivets back the amount of distance that I needed to center my plate. In this case, I did 20 millimeters back to the edge of the plate, um, which the edge of the plate is supposed to be the uh, front edge of the inside of the cover that goes on here. Um, and then I measured the width of this and the width between the rivets, subtracted the, the difference and then divided by two and just measured back out again from the rivets uh, and put a mark on either side. So now I can position this exactly where it needs to go. And I'll just go ahead and tape again around this to tape this into place and uh, drill the holes. So I was able to get the step drill down to 730 seconds. I have one more step to get to the quarter inch size, which is what I want here. Now I did leave the template that I had over the top of the sheet metal and fuselage. It actually worked really, really well doing that and using the step bit because, you know, the step bit starts drilling the next hole down when it's when it when it jumps to the next uh, step so by having this template on top i was able to stop it even though it started to drill the next uh the next size hole you can see the little chamfer that's ending up there um you know where that occurred but i was able to stop the drill each time once it stepped down uh to that next level so now i just need to go one more size um, but like I said, using this template on top and leaving it there, preventing me from actually drilling down too big of a hole into the uh, into the sheet metal, kind of just acting as a little bit of a barrier or buffer as I'm drilling. So I'm going to go ahead and get through all of these holes again one more time. I've actually gone over this. Let's see, I did the 16th inch size. I did 330 seconds. I did 8th inch. Then I've done two steps now. I did, I did one where I went twice and then another one where I went four times. Now, what's interesting is when you have the sheet metal stacked on top of each other and you start drilling down, it actually will jump twice as it gets through the first layer and then through the second layer. So you can actually just count the steps as you're drilling. So for example, I drilled up to an eighth inch size in everything, which you know was the lowest setting on my step bit. And then I counted two steps, which took me down to the, the next level on here, I was thinking I was going two levels, but I wasn't because it was going through the top sheet metal and then through the bottom and it would it would step twice. Uh, and then the next time I went around, I stepped four times. So I just went one, two, three, four as it went through and stopped. And now I've gotten to the point where I'm at that 730 seconds. So let me go around this one more time, see if I can get the quarter inch hole size done and I'll show you what it looks like when it's finished. So I went through the holes one last time with a quarter inch straight cut uh, reamer in my drill. So I think I'm done now. Uh, I think I counted that I drilled through all of these holes seven times, which uh, I think is like 840 holes that I essentially drilled. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and take the tape off this and just see what it looks like. I think it should look pretty good. All right, let me get my air hose. Got lots of debris in there. All right, the other thing we've got here is uh, I do still have the plastic on fuselage here. So in fact, I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can peel that off with this. And then I'll cut that off just to keep as much plastic on here as possible to protect it. But that looks awesome. Uh, yeah, that looks perfect. Great. All right. So I'm going to call the front of this basically done. I'm not going to mess with this again until I create the fiberglass uh, fairing that's got to go over the top of this with the vent in the back to allow the air to escape. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to come back here between th frame three and frame four and we're going to do some more tape marks here and mark off where we need to cut the 40 by 80 uh, intake vent holes and we're going to do that next. Okay I've marked the 
places I'm going to cut out the intake vents. Um, these are 40 millimeters tall and 80 millimeters wide. Um, I think the only thing I'm going to do first is I'm going to drill a small 16th inch hole uh, close to my line here just to see if I flip it over how close I am to the edge of frame three. Um, this basically should be installed right up against it, but I don't want to cut into it. Um, so I think if I just drill a 16th inch hole, I'll be able to see it from the other side, measure and see how close my line actually is. Cause I'm just measuring, you know, the standard six millimeters from the center of the rivet to find the edge and assuming that's where it is. So you see, I drilled a small 16th inch hole here. I did that on both sides. I did flip it over and look and, uh, that hole is exactly the same distance away from uh, the frame edge on the inside as it is from my line. So if I just cut and leave my line here, I'll be perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, cut out these holes. Okay, I successfully cut the two vent holes into the uh, fuselage here. Exactly 40 by 80, one on each side. So what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and cut out the pattern that I made, um, and I'll do this on the CNC machine. Uh, and see if I can bend one of these and get one of these vents actually fit in here and see how well it works. Uh, I may have to do some modifications. I'm expecting to have to do a couple tests on this before uh, I get it correct. So let me cut some of those out. I'll bend some, uh, I'll bend one into shape and we'll, well actually I'll cut out one uh, because I know I might have to change the design, but I'll cut out one. We'll go ahead and bend that. We'll try and fit it in here and see how close we get. Well, I've I basically got the first vent installed. I did go ahead and drill out this rivet here and I dimpled the uh, the skin and the panel behind it. Just, I was able to get my uh, dimple die in between uh, the hole here with the uh, vent out. But um, yeah, it looks like, I mean, this is gonna work. So um, just a little bit of uh, sanding and filing a little bit more just to make sure that this fits nice and smooth. But I went ahead and bent the flanges on the other side. Um, so now what I can do is I'm gonna make the one for the, that goes over there. And what I'll do is I'll close both of these like that. And then I'll flip it over and I'll go ahead and start making the foam uh, strips that have to go in there with the cap that goes on top. I wanna try and get the uh, cap glued onto those foam strips so that tomorrow I can come back and actually go ahead and install those. And then once those are installed, I should be able to come back and just bend this lip over here on the front, just curve it down a little bit. I think I can even do it by hand just to get it so that it closes up this little gap here on the end and also gives a little bit of a, a you know seal on the front here as it goes down. So, uh, but otherwise this looks like, I mean, I think this is how it's supposed to work. Small amount of air, full open, fully closed. Looks good. Okay, I now have both of the air intake scoops, um, the initial fit done. I haven't done anything on the inside of the airplane, so what I'm gonna do now is flip this over, put it on its wheels, and then see if I can start fitting in the foam that is supposed to go uh, on either side between frame three and uh, frame four. That's what's kind of supposed to provide a little bit of friction for these is they're supposed to kind of rub against the side of the foam. Um, in order to, uh, uh, you know, give a little bit of resistance. In fact, I'm guessing that they're probably not supposed to be rubbing anywhere around on the sheet metal. So I may even need to widen a little bit of the sheet metal and maybe inset the foam just a little bit, just to give a little bit of clearance there so that this doesn't rub um, and make sure that the foam is what is hitting the sides of these and kind of pinching this together so that when we open and close it, it rubs on the foam. So. Well, before I go ahead and cut the foam strips, you can see what the uh, vent uh, intake now looks like on the inside. Now, I bent the, the eight millimeter flanges on this one. Um, I haven't bent the ones on this side yet. Um, I would recommend that you don't bend those flanges until you get these things actually fit in here. Now, I did try and bend the flanges on my uh, bending brake and I, it didn't work because I, there just isn't enough room for the um, for the bends that are going different directions there. I just didn't have enough room on my small little bending brake. So um, I ended up bending these flanges by hand. Well, not by hand, I clamped them into a vise and then, then basically bent them over by hand uh, that way just to make sure that I could get those in there without damaging the part. Um, I, actually I actually damaged one trying to bend it in my uh, bending brake. So then I had to start over on one of these, but uh, let me go ahead and bend the flanges on this one. 
and then I'll get these uh, foam strips that are, are uh, the the foam parts that are supposed to go from frame three here to frame four and up against the sides of this on either side. We'll see if I can get those fit in. What I'm curious to see is if I push down on this, you know, does it go all the way flat and flush against it? But it should, as long as I've got the height that fits underneath here in the back, as far as the foam goes. Um, but uh, I do have some fitting that needs, some additional fitting that needs to be done on these. Like I said, I do need to trim around this hole a little bit more just to give myself a little bit of extra clearance. So let me cut the foam and um, I'll show you what it looks like when I get those in place. All right, I've got the foam uh, stiffeners or supports that are there for the vents on both sides. And so what I'm gonna do now is just go ahead and cut the uh, metal cap that's supposed to go on top of there. Um, and I'll get those glued on the top tonight. That way I can come back hopefully tomorrow and we'll get these glued into place. And then we'll, before I glue those in though, I am gonna widen these uh, holes a little bit just so there's maybe a quarter of a millimeter on either side just so that these the aluminum isn't rubbing on the aluminum edges there um, And then I'll make sure that these get inset just enough that uh, this uh, Vent when it opens and closes will be rubbing on the side of the uh, foam and not the metal And what I'll probably do is is even if I left it a little bit too far in I can always uh, sand the side of the uh, foam strip a little bit to make sure that the fit is adjusted properly. We also have to pop rivet a little handle across the top here. It's a support that that keeps this from bending in and out also but it also gives us you know finger hooks to be able to, or the ability to hook our fingers on it and lift it up and push it down. So I'm gonna get the caps glued on and uh, we'll check it again tomorrow. So I'm trying to do the final fit of these foam stiffeners that need to be installed on either side of these vents. And I think what I'm going to try and do is give myself that little bit of an overlap with the foam inward um, around this opening, just so I make sure that that uh, vent, when it's opening and closing, is riding up against the uh, foam here and not rubbing on the sheet metal. But what that means is I'm going to probably put a piece of tape here to mark about a half a millimeter off on this side, and I'm going to sand this opening just a little bit wider um, again, so that I can position both of these right just past the edge of the sheet metal on either side. I'll go ahead and get those glued into place and uh, then we should be able to try and refit the uh, vents in place. So I feel pretty comfortable about um, the position of these inside the fuselage. Um, so I'm going to do one last thing uh, before I prepare these to get glued into place. Uh, one of the things that the manual kind of shows is that we should be radiusing the inside edge of each one of these where it fits behind the uh, the vent here when it closes so that we get a tight snug fit between the top edge uh, and the side because we've got a, obviously a radius in this bend here we're supposed to transfer that so what I did is I just marked the front and the back of where this is supposed to be positioned I'm gonna go ahead and file down the inside edge of both of these and radius it and just make it so that it fits pretty neatly uh, underneath this this uh, scoop here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that next. Um, I am going to allodyne these, the tops of these, before I glue these into place. So I'll do that next uh, after I get done shaping these. Okay, I've got the uh, stiffeners glued in place and held in with uh, clamps for the intake vents. Um, this one ended up being a little bit difficult to try and figure out how to hold these into place so they wouldn't move, but yet they have to be supported on both sides because the skin isn't strong enough to clamp to on the other side and the uh, stiffener itself is not strong enough to clamp to either. So I had to put some aluminum on the other side to try and provide some support on the other side of the clamp and then I cut some uh, strips of MDF to clamp on the inside here, but uh, it gets really messy trying to get these in the right place, keep track of the glue, and then make sure the glue doesn't get everywhere, make sure that there's a uh, nice edge of uh, foam just overlapping the, uh, the edge of the hole there. Um, but uh, anyway, we'll uh, let this dry overnight. We'll come back tomorrow. We'll see what it looks like. So I came in this morning, uh, took my clamps off, and uh, just did a little bit of cleanup of some of the glue that was still sitting around these on both sides. Um, and then I just popped in these vents. Uh, I mean, they work pretty well. Um, it's nice, I don't have any, uh, you know, I don't really have anything rubbing metal to metal anymore. So it's just sliding on the, uh, um, 
on the foam strips that are in there. So, I mean, basically, push this all the way in and you can see how it closes up. Now, I do have to, I do have to close off that little gap on either side here by rounding these corners here and just bending this over a little bit just to make sure that it uh, isn't going to pop back into the position where it could be slid up and pop out. Um, but it's only going to pop out inside the airplane, so if something were to happen, you know, and it, it were to come out for some reason, it would just come out inside the airplane. Um, but anyway, I, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty happy with how this, this is working. I'm not sure that it could be any better, so I think uh, I'm just going to keep moving ahead to finish these up. And uh, I do need to put the little T handle, or a little uh, handle that's supposed to be riveted across the front here. So. Between here and here, we're just supposed to rivet a piece of aluminum just to strengthen this and also provide a little handle to pull up on. Um, but otherwise, it should push right down and open up, and then you should be able to pull a little handle and pull it close. All right, so I'm gonna keep moving forward, see if I can just finish these up. I'm trying to finish up the last few things I need to do before I can uh, start going back to work on the rear fuselage to just tidy up a few things before I attach it to the front fuselage. Well, I went ahead and cut the uh, strip that's supposed to go across the top of these uh, intake um, intake uh, vents, and I went ahead and did a, I just did a solid countersunk rivet from the bottom, uh, just so that I would fit flush. I think the plans tell you to use a pop rivet, but it just looks nicer in this case to have a uh, solid rivet. Plus, it's a little bit shorter uh, when you do that. But um, you know, these these do function, so I mean, they do what they're supposed to do. Uh, you know, they're not the most, they're not the prettiest thing in the world, uh, but they do work. So I guess I'm just going to leave it at that. Uh, here's what it looks like from the outside. And you can see I did just curve the end of this, just bent it over. And what it did is it keeps it from getting pulled tight enough to, to get down into the groove that's there um, for getting it in and out. And that seems like it'll suffice. It's got a nice tight fit on the front. I think I might round these edges a little bit more and clean these up again at some point. but. They're in, they work, so I'm gonna call that done. At least I can, I can pop these out anytime I want by just uh, you know pulling them a little bit on the top where that handle is, sliding it up, and then they come right out. So um, for now, I'm gonna keep moving on and work on the next thing.